Literally minutes ago, uh, the Wilkes-Barre Police Department and the Luzerne County District Attorney's Office made a number of arrests into the kidnapping, torture, and murder and related to the Carlisle Street investigation that occurred several months ago. The victim of that murder was Nicole Cuevas, a 38-year-old female from Saginaw, Michigan. In early 2023, she traveled to Wilkes-Barre with one of her murderers. Upon her arrival, she stayed at the Carlisle Street residence. Not long after moving there, unfortunately, things with her roommates turned sour. She attempted to gather the money to return back to Saginaw, Michigan, but was unsuccessful. During her stay there, uh, she was handcuffed to a basement post. Over the course of several weeks, she was severely beaten. The beatings resulted in bruising, a broken ankle, she, uh, all, nearly all of her ribs were broken, her navel, nasal cavity was destroyed, her head was shaved, she was stabbed and slashed in several places, including her arm, her torso, and all over her back, and her hyoid bone in her neck was broken. Uh, that is generally indicative to investigators of a strangulation. The evidence revealed that she was also kicked and stomped, and at some point strangled, all of which led to her death. Following her death, she was wrapped in a tarp, tied with electrical cords and rope, and buried in the dirt floor basement of 142 Carlisle Street. Related to that investigation, we uncovered a body behind the host inn alongside the Cross Valley Expressway. The property of 142 Carlisle Street at the time of this murder, well, the owner of that property was Deborah Fox. Deborah Fox has been identified as the body alongside the Cross Valley Expressway. Naturally, we believe these two investigations and incidents are related. The death investigation of Deborah Fox remains under investigation. Today, I'm relieved to announce that in a joint investigation with Wilkes-Barre City and the District Attorney's Office, the following arrests were made in the murder of Nicole Cuevas. Desiree Lynette, Faith Beamer, Jason Race, William Wolf, and Sarai Doyle were all arrested for murder. In addition to the murder charges, they are all currently incarcerated on charges of conspiracy to commit murder, kidnapping for the confinement of Nicole Cuevas, conspiracy to commit kidnapping, aggravated assault for the injuries sustained to the victim, and abuse of corpse. All five individuals were arraigned this afternoon by Magisterial District Judge Richard Cronauer we extend our thanks to Judge Cronauer, uh, who had to wait uh, most of the day for the paperwork and the considerable number of arrests. Uh, and he arraigned all of the individuals. They are being held without bail at various correctional institutes uh, around the area. A special thank you for this investigation to Mayor George Brown. Uh, as you can imagine, the arrest of five individuals and the length of time that this investigation took required a substantial amount of resources. Uh, in addition to the mayor, we have to thank Chief Coffey, uh, who was willing to assign all the investigators necessary. Involved in this investigation were the PSP, uh, the State Police Forensic Services Unit, naturally Mercyhurst University, the Cumberland County Forensic Lab, Coroner Jill Matthews, and all of her team, the Wilkes-Barre City Patrol Unit, Wilkes-Barre Detectives James Conmey, Lieutenant Matt Stash, Mike McGrath, Chris Machasek, Jason Dudick, Michael Twerty, Justin Edwards, James Fisher, Jeff Ferentz, Jason Oliver, Kevin Andrus, and Joe Sinavich. Additionally, special thanks in this case to the members of my office, uh, not least of which is Assistant District Attorney Carly Lewandowski, to say that she lived with this case on a day-to-day -day basis would be inaccurate because much of the investigation and legal decisions that had to be made occurred uh, during the nighttime hours. Um, so she hasn't gotten any rest pretty much till this began and was on it uh, from day to day, night to night, uh, every step of the way with the investigators. Additionally, detectives Chuck Jensen, Richard Naprava, Charles Casey, and Neil Murphy from the district attorney's office assisted all of the Wilkes-Barre investigators previously named. Of course, the fact that these arrests were made today does not mean that the investigation has concluded. Uh, these investigators are continuing to actively work this case. Uh, we are 
additionally and conjunctively working the death investigation of Deborah Fox. Anyone with information on either of these cases is still asked to participate. Your information could be vital to solving the case or proceeding with the investigations. Anyone with that information is asked to contact Detective James Conmey of the Wilkes-Barre City Police Department or Lieutenant Matt Stash of the Wilkes-Barre Police Department at 570-208-0911. Um, I'm happy to take any questions to the extent that I can answer any questions. Sam, can you say when the call was committed? Yes, April of 2023. Yeah, was her body left in the tarp and buried, or was it left in the tarp? No, it, it was in a tarp and buried under uh, the dirt in the dirt basement. Uh, there was a part of that basement that had clearly been disturbed that led investigators to the correct area to dig, uh, which of course led to the forensic exhumation. Okay, and early on when the body was found in February, um, information came out that detectives were led there. Can you say what led? Uh, there were a number of leads that came to police that led them to that residence. So citizens with information, actually. Okay. And Miss Fox, Deborah Fox, can you say how her body ended up off the North Coast? At this time, I can't say. Other questions? Um, so we have pictures of the victim and all of the defendants, and we will have copies. All of the complaints are identical. Um, they're still being processed. When the first one came out, we made copies of that. For all of you, it has the affidavit of probable cause. Um, that's all we have. Sam, can yeah. I ask you a few more questions? Sure. Um, I know last summer, July, there was a victim that was tortured in this basement over a, an alleged child sexual assault case. Um, was this basement used for other, uh, for other crimes, such as Nicole? So that's part of the ongoing, uh, ongoing investigation. I will uh, say that that case is related, and that did occur at this residence. purpose was to notify next of kin. So they were just informed today that the body was found? Correct. Can you release her out of Ms. Fox's cause of the manner of death? I'm sorry, can you say that again? The cause of the manner of death for Deborah Fox? I cannot. Will there be more arrests coming forward? I suppose that's going to depend on the investigation. Um, I know that we'll have at least one more arrest. Um, related to this case, but I can't say what it's for or what the charges might be. Is there a relation to the further arrest that you have had for the arrest for Deborah and or Nicole? The cases we believe are related. Um, obviously, just by circumstantial nature of her being the homeowner, um, and that is an active investigation, so I can't say any more about that. Are they related? When you arrest her, are they, are they, what's the relationship? Familial relationship? Yeah. I can't yes. say that. Deborah Fox went missing. Does anyone know when she went? Okay. Uh, I think she was last seen in January of this year. How beneficial and how grateful are you to the group from the college that assisted in the investigation? Oh, extremely grateful. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, the forensic exhumation is uh, a very specialized area. Uh, of course, there's a chance in digging someone up out of dirt you know, that you could lose out evidence. So it's important to have specialists. Mercy Hurst traveled all the way from Erie to help us out. Um, I can't say enough about what a great job they did, uh, how willing they were to work with us, and how hard they worked to preserve evidence. Uh, you'll see as this case proceeds and goes to trial, uh, the trace evidence that was able to be recovered uh, from that grave site uh, is basically a credit to both the coroner's office and Mercy Hurst University. Can you say the reason why Nicole came here? Um, she came here with one of the people that murdered her that resided at 142 Carlisle Street, believing that they were friends. Obviously, that went awry fairly quickly. Um, I think she came just really for a visit and uh, tried to get home, but was unsuccessful in that endeavor. And unfortunately, by nature of the fact that she couldn't escape the kidnappers, it resulted in her death. Was Nicole's family contacted with, or her relatives contacted by this case? They were also contacted today, yeah. And what led you to believe that, uh, what got the police searching the area around the Host Inn Hotel? Uh, also leads generated by the investigation of 142 Carlisle Street. Sam, what led you to all these, these people? I'm sure there's a lot of things you can't say, but that's a lot of defendants in one case for a murder. 
um, the tireless work of the investigators involved in this case. Um, to say that you know there were a lot of false leads, a lot of false statements made uh, that the investigators had to sift through in order to get to uh, the truth of the matter, to get to the right location, to locate Nicole Cuevas, and also to locate Deborah Cox. Um, so I credit them with corroborating statements of witnesses, uh, not all of whom were truthful at all times. Uh, and that's uh, a tribute to their hard work and their experience in recognizing that certain statements were false. Um, while Nicole was uh, being tortured, as you said, well, was Deborah Fox still the legal owner of the home at the time, or had the bank repossessed it? No, Deborah Fox was the legal owner at the time. What led people to leave the residence was the fact that she lost ownership. And can you say how long Nicole was tortured? Was it, like over it was over the course of many weeks. Thank you, everybody.